Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I thought I would give you guys a story time and tell you the story of how I landed my dream job. Um, this kind of happened a couple of months ago while still in school and it was just something that I think the stars really aligned for. So I want to just tell you my story, tell you how that process went. I think it's it's interesting to know, especially because I don't tell everyone this thing. Now that it's kind of like over with, I feel comfortable sharing it. So I'm going to be baking while I tell you the story because tomorrow's my grandma's birthday and I thought I would make a cake for her. So I baked the cakes. They're cooling now. I have to level them and decorate them and um, you're going to come along with me while we do that. So let's get into it. All right, so this story kind of starts when I figured out that I wanted to do infectious disease as my specialty. And so we have to rewind back to 2023, the month of like June, July-ish. And that was exactly when I knew that I wanted to do ID. So I was working with a couple of residents and they had like saw how much I really liked doing that specialty and they were hyping me up to ask the attending if there was a potential position in the hospital that would be available for me to kind of fill after I finished school. And this was very much something that was always in the back of my mind because all of our faculty and teachers and things like that they're always telling us that rotations are like an interview almost even though it's still part of your school like a lot of people can get jobs from their rotation sites so of course that was always in the back of my head i worked up the courage to um eventually like ask the head of the department because i was working with her for two weeks and I think the last day we got so slammed with consults like we were so busy that um we were honestly rounding until maybe I want to say six o'clock and that's probably one of the latest days that we were working together I at that at that time at six o'clock I was like okay I am I either gonna ask her now or I'm just never gonna ask her and so um as we finished up rounding she told us uh, like she told me that she really liked um what she saw on the rotation and things like that and then um to continue like learning and she just she gave me a lot of encouragement but i could not bring up the the big like elephant in the room for me and so she said her goodbyes to the resident she said her goodbyes to me and then that was the end of it and then leaving that day i it was just like bothering me in the back of my mind and I was kind of like let me just reach out to her and like see what she says right like it doesn't hurt because if I don't ever ask then I'll never know kind of thing and so I was on the train coming home and I sent her a message and I said like hi doctor um xyz I really liked working with you and working with you these last couple weeks made me realize how much I want to go into this specialty in this field um and I was just like I had a couple of questions and I was wondering if I could speak to you about it I wanted to leave it very open and like broad because I didn't want to just outright say like do you have a job for me or would you hire me I think it's very direct and I think if that person wants to hire you they'll kind of know what you're trying to hint at so I sent that message and then I got a message back from her saying that, you know, like my message took her by surprise and she's so happy to hear that I enjoyed it. And then she asked if I would be free to meet with her tomorrow and if that'd be okay so that we could talk. So obviously I was really excited and I was like, oh my God, she said yes, like I'll be able to talk to her. And so the next day I came in 
and I did my like rotations. I went and saw patients and stuff like that. And then at a specific time, I had to go meet with her. So I went to her office and then I sat down and I spoke to her. I also just realized that I am not even telling you what I'm doing. I'm still waiting for the cake to kind of cool a little bit because it just came out of the oven. I'm washing some strawberries right now and then I should make the whipping cream. This is a substitute. It's by Country Crock. It's a plant heavy whipping cream. I don't know how this is going to go. I've never used this before, but I thought it was cool. So to continue on with the story, um, I went into her office and she basically told me that she was like really surprised when I told her because I guess not a lot of people or students in general feel um, like they have that sort of pull to ID. And so I guess for her, it was like, wow, I haven't really heard anyone that has an interest in this field. She asked me questions like, why do you like ID? What specific part of it? Um, and I told her that I really liked trying to figure out like which antibiotics work for what and for what bug and things like that. And then she asked me, have I spoken to the PA that works with her in the hospital? So she asked me if I'd spoken to her. I said no, but I'd be glad to. So she gave me her number and then I texted the other PA to ask her about things. But ultimately from that conversation I had with her, I like from what I got from it, it was that you know, she really liked me and she thinks I have a lot of potential because I'm still learning. But they just hired a new PA in January of that year. And she was also still on training as um, as I was working in the hospital with them. So like it was fairly recent that they had hired someone. And so they weren't exactly looking to hire anyone else. So she just kind of said like, I think for you, it, it'd be smart to start in a field that was broader and then make your way into ID because there is not a lot of opportunities for PAs and infectious disease. And um, it really is just based on timing. So that's what that's what she told me. And I was like, OK, I understand. Um, and I kind of just like I was sad that I wasn't offered a job at that point, but also I appreciated the advice that she gave me. And I think ultimately it did give me a clear mindset on how to get into that field because apart from just like specifically finding an ID job, I didn't know what my backup plan was and I had no idea what I was gonna do if I didn't find a job in ID. Okay, so I zoomed out a little bit more so you could see what I'm doing. But essentially after that conversation, I said to myself, like, I need a backup plan in case I can't find a job in ID because of how unpopular it is or or just because of how like scarce it is in the PA world. So after that conversation, I kind of thought to myself, like, I could see myself maybe doing internal medicine because that's a that's what a lot of physicians do when they um want to specialize in id they do medicine first so they do internal medicine and then eventually do a fellowship in id so i said to myself like that would be a good base for me to have right like trying to understand all the body systems before i specifically hone in on one type of specialty and so i made that my plan that I was going to look for internal medicine jobs as well as ID and if I couldn't find an ID job then that was what I was going to do I was going to eventually just be in internal medicine ultimately I didn't start looking for jobs until maybe like October I want to say a lot of people started later than me some people started before but it just really depends on like what you're comfortable with and for me it made sense to start earlier because i knew what i wanted to look for and i also knew how like rare it is to find id so it didn't hurt to start looking earlier and i didn't see anything for id except for this one job but it was in a different borough 
and it was in Staten Island. So for me, that's a that's a far commute just because I have to like go over a bridge. And I've done a rotation that was in Staten Island, and for me, it was it's not like sustainable to have a career in that borough because the commute would just like make me really unhappy to be there so i ultimately did not end up applying for that job but i did apply for a internal medicine job like i, I saw one and it was in the city and i said to myself like i could see myself going to the city but not Staten island so i applied for the one in the city and then I had an interview and they offered me the job, but I turned it down because from the interview, it just seemed to me that they were just looking for a person to kind of cover and not really like train well to have a strong base to a career, especially as a new grad. I think that was my biggest concern. It was that I wanted to feel supported where I work because this is new for me. Like I've never taken care of patients on my own before. I've never done any of that. And I think starting out, like your first job should be very much somewhere you feel like you can make mistakes and also learn. Through that interview, I didn't get that. And when I asked about the training period, they kind of said like, it's four weeks and it'd be three 12 hour shifts. So to me, that's like my training period would be 12 shifts and then I was on my own, which I wasn't comfortable with. So that's ultimately why I turned it down. And then I kept looking. That day that I turned down that job for internal medicine, I was looking for infectious disease physician assistant jobs. Okay, I'm so sorry. The, ca the camera cut out, so I don't know what it ended up on, but essentially... That day that I ended up declining that offer for the internal medicine job, I was online looking for infectious disease PA positions and I came across one from a hospital that I was familiar with and I applied so fast. Like I remember sending it to my friend and I was like, oh my God, like this is a sign. I should be applying for this. Um, and I ultimately like applied and then a couple days later, I heard back with an email asking for when I'd be um, available for an interview. So it was crazy because I remember getting that email and I was sitting in class and then I saw something come into my email. So I looked at it and it was asking me like when I was free. So I gave a time and um, I set up an interview. And then when I had that interview, like, on the job listing, it didn't say anything about what specific field and ID I would be working in, but there's so many. So there's like antibiotics, there's also HIV clinics, there's um, like people who work specifically with fungi and um, or like viruses. So it's it's like very broad in a sense because it covers a lot. Um, and personally, I did not ever have experience working in an HIV clinic or just in general, like we learned about HIV and all the different medications and things that you need in terms of like fighting HIV, like your integrase inhibitors, your um, NNRTIs and NRTIs and things like that. But I just never had like experience working with patients who had HIV and having to kind of tailor their medications. So that wasn't what I was really excited about, but I was really, really excited about antibiotics. Like I told the initial um, attending that I worked with on my rotation. So when I was interviewing, the doctor was telling me about what I'd be doing and she told me it was about antibiotics. And then she told me that Ideally, they would want someone that kind of has a little bit of knowledge about antibiotics, like what to look out for in terms of side effects and what labs to monitor and things like that. And that was when I kind of like threw in my two cents about antibiotics. I remember learning on rotations that specifically for daptomycin, which is a antibiotic, you need to monitor your CK levels, which stands for creatinine kinase, because you can get rhabdomyolysis from it which is when your muscles break down. So 
um that was like one of the things that stood out to me and i was like oh yeah like i remember um learning that you have to look out for ck levels when you're administering daptomycin she was like yeah yeah that's that's like one of them and then um she asked me if i ever had an experience with wound care and i just came off my surgical rotation so i was on vascular surgery and on that rotation let me tell you you are wrapping so many legs and so many feet because everyone is like gangrene so i did have like some practice in wound care and then that was the end of the interview you know like we wrapped it up i asked her a couple of questions and then it was back to like waiting for an offer maybe i made this whole thing is full of whipped cream um and i'm gonna cut the strawberries but i'm gonna put the cake on first so after the interview it was back to waiting for like a potential offer and what i did was try to like not think about it as much as possible because what happened was the previous um offer that i got it was very it was a very like quick turnaround period the talent team was very very like fast on offering me the job as well so it was kind of not realistic because that's not usually how fast the turnaround period is this time around it was a little slower maybe like a week and a half later maybe a week something like that the doctor reached back out to me and she asked if i was free for an interview with the head of the department now i was kind of like oh like i didn't know that i need to talk to the department for this kind of thing and i've also never had a conversation with anyone like that high up in the chain before so i was honestly scared for what was to come but i like i knew i wanted this job so i just told myself like you're just gonna have to suck it up and see how it goes what i did was set up an interview with the head of the department and i remember like the doctor telling me her name and stuff and i looked her up because that's what you were supposed to do like that's what we're taught to kind of go into it knowing a little bit about the hospital a little about a little bit about the people that you're like speaking to so i did a little bit of research on her and i was like oh she's done a lot of like research and she's well known like she even has her like own wikipedia page and all of this stuff so i was honestly just like what am i doing talking to this person and i also asked my aunt at that point like she works in research so i just wanted to kind of get her two cents on like how i should approach this or talk to a researcher um because she works in that field and she was like oh i know her name like i know who that is and i was like what do you mean you know who that is why do you know her that's just like not comforting at all and so i was a little freaked out but ultimately when i had my interview with her she was so nice like literally the most down-to-earth person ever and um she just basically wanted to get to know me because i'd be working in her department so she would have to know like who i was the interview went well and then i think a couple of days later i received a um call from hr asking me if i was still interested in the job and i said that i was and they were like okay well the department's going to extend an offer and that is basically when i got the offer from them so at that point i had also interviewed at another internal medicine job because throughout this entire time like i really wanted the id job but i couldn't put all my eggs in one basket and i didn't want to like wait around and just like do nothing so i was continuing on on the job search and i was also interviewing other places but i was really really hoping that i would get the job at this place because that was like my number one thing that i wanted so when i got the offer for the id job i stopped interviewing and i also rescinded 
another offer that I had for another internal medicine job. So that's essentially how I got the job. And I think this whole process took place over two months. So it was like a really nerve wracking period because all I can do is kind of just like sit there and wait for people to get back to me and also sit and wait for interviews and sit and wait for offers and stuff like that. So um, like it was a lot, but I think the whole experience taught me a lot of a lot about like interviewing and having confidence in yourself. Oh, also to backtrack. So when I had the interview with the head of the department, she also asked me the like very similar questions that the, the attending asked me when I was initially on rotations. And she asked me like, why did I want to do ID? Why did I choose something so specific? And I told her it all like stemmed from school and like learning about antibiotics in my pharmacology course. And then because of that interest, I ultimately ended up choosing that as my elective. And then the rest is history. Like I literally just fell in love with the whole like world of infectious disease. I think the whole process was crazy in itself because of like how I ended up finding this posting. And I really, really think that I was like one of the first people to apply because I truly believe that the first day that it was posted, that was when I reached out to them. Now I have the job. So that is how I found my dream job. And I can't wait to start just because like, this is what I've been working towards for the last five years all right so i'm going to continue decorating this cake and then um when i'm finished i'll show you guys So that's going to be the end of this video. I forgot to end it like the day that I actually finished um, decorating the cake, but the cake was a success. My grandma really, really liked it. Um, so that's going to be it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one. Bye.